Uh, so Kevin, um, thanks a lot for giving up your time um, today. Um, if you, for the sake of the video, if you could introduce yourself, um, sure. we'd much appreciate it. Thanks. Okay, thanks for coming, Phil. Uh, it's Kevin Robinson. I'm chief executive of uh, Lancashire Probation Trust. Uh, we uh, deal with offenders, manage risks, change lives, improve communities. Okay, uh, so uh, following on from that, in, in terms of your, if we look at it from a, a sort of a dream perspective or an aspirational perspective, what kind of dreams and aspirations do you hold for, for your line of work? Well, I kind of introduced it already by managing risk, which is the key thing for what, for what we do. And if, you got, if you've got an aspiration, it is that when you're managing people, that they don't reoffend. Really I mean, that has to be your ultimate aspiration. Improve people's lives, because as we know, it's not just about the offenders we deal with and changing their lives, it's actually the communities in which we operate. So we would like a crime-free uh, society, if you could. That's a, an aspiration for everybody, I guess, but not one that's, that I believe will be there in the future or even in the long term. And in, in terms of um, problems and obstacles and challenges in the way of these dreams, is it possible to say in, in, in a few words as to what yeah, the, the, well, the major... I think you quite rightly said, Phil, uh, in a few words, what do you do about uh, social and economic policy? Is that kind of impacting on people's lives? Is that the way in which we want to continue. Um, you know, we live in a, a time of austerity where the uh, the government's kind of view is is that they need to reduce public service costs. That's our police, prisons, probation, health. We're all getting reduced costs and have to deliver a more efficient, effective service uh, with less money. Um, so the offenders on the front line. The real interesting things now is um, crime starting to go up, and it's not um, it's not a serious crime. Violent crime's still there. But crime's going up and it's things such as meat, cheese, they're getting stolen and dealt with in the black market. Imagine that, meat and cheese being sold in the black market. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, it's a, it's certainly a sign of the times, I it suppose. Is, yeah. um, well, another point with regarding the times that we live in, um, is, is the internet useful for, for achieving those kind of... Aspirations. It, it is, and I think uh, Lancashire, uh, when I, I only came about eight months ago and joined Lancashire and, and my knowledge of internet came from my, my children's, the Facebooks, the Twitter, the, uh, and um, so I wasn't really engaged in it, but communications in, in Lancashire have, have kind of taken it to the fore, you know, I tweet at Lancashire Probation, uh, we have a Facebook page that, that we use for one of our approved premises, uh, we use uh, the media uh, very much through, through our web page that we've got. We try to engage with our community out there, telling them what we're doing and how we're doing it. And uh, I, I think um, the whole internet it, it is a real opportunity for us to uh, to engage more fully with, with the communities that we work with. You, you, you mentioned uh, Twitter. Um, I follow you myself uh, uh, on Twitter. Um, would you call yourself a, a prolific tweeter? No, um, I'm not prolific. I think you would know that, Phil. I, I like to kind of make my point at times about certain things. But I'll always respond to someone. I like people asking me questions, and if people ask me questions, I will respond to those questions in, in the right sort of way. And and if they if they want some information, we will always get it. We usually get back to people within 24 hours, as we say. Uh, if it's a weekend, I, I usually respond anyway, and uh, to say, look, you're on hold. Uh, come back to me on Monday. I'll come back to you on Monday. So, yeah. So, so you do get members of the public tweeting you directly. Yeah, yeah, we do. And, and criminology students or other students asking me questions about things or saying, uh, you know, can we do an internship with you? Uh, we have no internships at the moment, but it's just something we want to look at. Um, and I think it's a great opportunity for people just to get direct access to a chief exec, uh, whoever that may be. And, uh, and, and I'm prepared to respond to those people. And in terms of you, you, your other staff, uh, do, do they, are they encouraged to tweet with the members of the public and yeah we, we, we try and do that we, we're very conscious that we're a public face as well so we have to be very very careful about what we do a lot of our staff like yourself will be on Twitter as a personal thing and it's their views only when I make a view I have to be very very careful about what I say because of the political context that, that could be taken yeah, yeah. in yeah. Uh, but, but I'll certainly tweet about what my views and what the views of the service and the board here have to say so staff are engaged in it definitely um, we have a an approved premise, which is a hostel for women called Edith Rigby House, and uh, that's also got its own Twitter account. And we think that's very important about raising the issues of women offenders, who are some of the most marginalised in uh, in our criminal justice system. 
So, so, so Twitter is is good at raising your profile uh, and engaging with the community. Um, one form of your work um, that has done quite a lot of online engagement is community payback. Um, is, is there anything that stands out about community payback to, to, for other parts of your work I in think terms of online? Um, community payback has been great. Uh, what I would say about community payback though is, is if, if you had a fantastic product and you were in the private sector, would you change its name five times in, in ten years? You wouldn't. You know, we remember it as community service, enhanced, enhanced community payback, uh, community punishment, and now it's unpaid work. Um, I think it's a real opportunity for the public to engage with something, but do they really know what unpaid work is? Is that a voluntary uh, thing or is it a punishment? Well, we all know that the courts see it as a punishment, uh, and rightly so, and we're prepared to engage with the community to say, how can we use this punishment to best uh, give restorative justice, in a sense, to your community? And we do get a response from that. And maybe there's other ways in which we can look at to the public, to, uh, you know, how we deal with victims of, of uh, maybe uh, crimes which uh, we might be able to do something with the community in that way. And maybe the internet's a forum where people would feel um, better about kind of uh, engaging with a big organisation such as ourselves. Because it's very, very difficult for people to come forward and say something. The internet gives them opportunity to, to, to look at it from afar and ask a question without feeling intimidated by, by the bureaucracy of an organisation. Do you think it's possible for the internet to um, shine a light on other aspects of probation work? Perhaps things not as well recognisable as community payback? I think people need to know what we do. You know, maybe the interaction in courts, you know, kind of videos and stuff around courts about how we do home visits and why we do home visits. You know, why don't we kind of have some kind of, uh, um, some art project on there about, you know, offenders maybe uh, work, uh, demonstrating what being on probation is about so that uh, the public can see what that's about. Um, we do electronic monitoring as well. We, you know, people get tagged, so we, we have people on supervision, we have people on licence, we have lifers, people who've committed horrendous crimes and, and we manage those people safely in the community. But do the public really know that that's what we do? We run programmes for people around domestic violence. We do things such as uh, alcohol and drug abuse programmes, general offending behaviours. I mean, some of those are real cognitive behavioural programmes, real change programmes uh, that impact upon people and make them change their way of thinking. So if, if students involved in this research were interested uh, in, in creating some kind of online resource for those kind of aspects of probation work, would that be something that might have value to an organisation like yourself? I think we're always open to kind of those opportunities. And if somebody came up with an idea, we have a fantastic communication department here who are always looking to kind of innovate and create something that uh, can engage the public. And would it have any sort of specific features? Is there anything particularly that you would like from a resource in terms of, say, uh, interaction or, well, uh, or visual images or...? Well, I think that interaction is the issue and how you do that. Uh, we have problems with interacting with our prisons because we do video conferencing, but it kind of gets locked down with the technology about what, what you can do and the timing of, of things like that. Um, I'm very, very keen in terms of looking at ways in which we can engage with the public. Maybe, you know, filming some of our board meetings. You know, why, why do we have, uh, we have an open forum for people to come and sit in our board meetings? Why don't we put them online? Let people know what goes on in our board meetings about where the, the decision making is. I think there is opportunities for us to do that. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. With, with regards to your video conferencing, is that a technological problem that you're having with, with prisons or is that some kind of security? Security. Security. Right. security. The technology is there as we know, you know right. but uh, it's the security of using that. Whereas people use Skype on a day to day basis, you know, we, we get clamped down on security that we, we have to kind of adhere to. Yeah. Do um, offenders on, on probation, do, do they engage with officers through Twitter or online things, or is that, is that not? No, we wouldn't do that. Uh, right. But we do use text. For instance, right. uh, we text people to say, you've got an appointment coming up. And, uh, so that, that's a way of using it. Uh, we, we, we don't do Twitter, in a sense, because that's a public domain, so we would be right. kind yeah. of sharing confidential information across the airways. As, as the text service, has that proved beneficial in terms of... Um, reducing the number of missed appointments, for example. It, it, it engages on a compliance, so getting people into the office, or if someone's late for an appointment, it's quick text to say, you know, where are you, what you're doing. You know, there's more mobile phones in the world now than there is people. And that kind of shows, really, that we have to engage in that process. And, again, 
it's a way in which offenders can engage in, in a proper way. I'm not saying that that should be the supervision element of an offender because we've got to demonstrate to the public that we, we're holding people to account. But it is a way of communicating people and reminding people who've got chaotic lives. You know, you've got an appointment today, make sure you come in at 10 o'clock. And if they're not in at 10 o'clock, where are you? And, and then say, look, if you're not in by 5, we're going to breach you. So, you know, they, we know people pick the text message up. We also ring people. We don't just text. We actually ring. These are the ways we've got to develop to kind of communicate with the people we work with. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I, I get to see that, you know, you're open-minded to, you know, the digital world, um, if, you, if, if, if we can call it that. How important is it for um, prospective uh, probation officers to have digi digital skills? I think that's absolutely critical. Um, when I joined the service and uh, was some 25, 30 years ago, um, nobody kind of uh, did anything other than pen push. We wrote everything. You know, I learned my typing skills through my work uh, on doing our risk assessments, or what we call OASIS, about putting up my contact logs and typing in our contact logs yourself, my day-to-day -day work with people. So now, the, the youth of the day and people are being brought up on their laptops on using digitals, and, and it's so important, it's critical. The probation service spend you know, a significant amount of their time actually inputting data and uh, making records of offenders who they deal with. Critical part of our work.